This is going to be your guide to Rock-type Pokemon in Pokemon Quest. Now, the interesting thing about Rock-type Pokemon in general is that I feel they are overlooked in the franchise of Pokemon, especially if we're talking about the original 151, because you think Geodude, Onyx, Rhyhorn, kind of the same rock ground stuff going on, but in Pokemon Quest, they are some of the most useful Pokemon have in the early to mid game, as well as the mid to late, not like the ultra late game and post game, but they are fairly useful to have throughout the game, so that's going to be pretty good for cooking. Also, it might be easy to forget when you're just thinking about the standard rock type Pokemon, that fossil Pokemon also count as rock typings, so this becomes one of the most important guides for the cool factor of having a fossil Pokemon, or also the utility factor of of having strong Pokemon on your team, so let's get cooking. Now, when it comes to rock types, we're actually a little bit in luck. There's a few typings that don't get their own recipe, but the rock typing does have the stone soup a la cube, and it tells us how to make it right here. Whole lot of hard things and a few minerals. Now, minerals are classified as the icy rock and the fossil, and then hard things are as labeled. So we have soft and small, or we could also have hard and small, and that's what we're going to use this for. So if you want to make the stone soup, you could either use three fossils and two apricorns, or three apricorns and two fossils, and that is going to be the most basic recipe. Now, this recipe right here will give you the chance of getting a Geodude or a Rhyhorn, and even though it's just a basic recipe, these are some of the more useful rock type Pokemon that you might be able to get. So when it comes down to this, at level 42, Rhyhorn will evolve into Rhydon, and at level 36, that's when you will eventually have a Golem. Now, people like using Golem because it gets access to the Harden. If you have Harden with the Sharing Stone, you can buff the takiness of your team, which is a really defensively bulky rock of a Pokemon that can really hold the team together. So if you want a quick tank on your team, make some Stone Soups, go and get yourself a Geodude, evolve it, and then it's going to be pretty good from there. I mean, even Geodude and uh, Graveler in the early game, if you have a Sharing Stone, or if you just need a tanky Pokemon, they have access to a quick and easy Harden on a very simple recipe. Now, Rhydon is going to be a lot more useful, because when it evolves, you get access to some very powerful moves that do insane amounts of damage on a fairly bulky Pokemon as well. So, this is why I feel that the Rock uh, typing might be overlooked in Pokemon Quest, because, hey, you just make the basic recipe, and you get access to some of the strongest Pokemon inside the game, which can be fairly useful. Now, when we get into the next Next recipe that is going to be the good recipe and the only Pokemon that you can get with this is Onyx. Now I haven't seen as many people use the Onyx as they do with the Golem but it's still fairly useful since it does get access to the Harden and you can specifically target it with the good recipe since it's the only Pokemon that appears in the good stone soup. Now, making a good stone soup is fairly interesting because we have our foundation right here. You put in two apricorns and you also put in two fossils, and that's kind of all there is to it because now you can add in any one of these, and that gives us our one precious ingredient that then bumps the stone soup from normal to good. So one precious makes a normal recipe good, three precious makes it very good, and then five makes it special. So this is going to be how you can target a an onyx specifically, or you can also do a few other ones. Three apricorns, a fossil, an icy rock. So something like this will also give you a good recipe pretty much it's not too hard to follow the stone soup and then add something in to make it precious next up we have the very good recipe the very good recipe is where we start getting fossil pokemon so if you want ammonite or kabuto that is what you can use however onyx is still going to be a potential pokemon that you can receive so you might waste a couple of those precious ingredients just to end up with an onyx that you could have gotten at the good recipe now to make the very good recipe, uh, you can do a lot of different things because now we're adding in a lot of icy rocks. The icy rocks will help us reach our hard requirement, so even though this looks blue, even though this might feel like something for a water type Pokemon, you're actually making a rock type, and you can mix in a lot of things in different ways. So adding in three icy rocks, a fossil, and even a mushroom, that's kind of it. So as we talked about, you know, we're just making our hard requirements, we're getting our minerals, or even two icy rocks, another precious ingredient, and then like two fossils or something like that. This is going to be how you end up with a good chance at a fossil Pokemon. But what if you just want to get fossil Pokemon with a 100% chance? Well, that's where the special recipe comes into play. So with the special recipe, you can get Kabuto, Aerodactyl, or Ammonite, and then at level 40, that is when your Kabuto evolves into Kabutops, and your Ammonite evolves into the Amastar, but it seems like Aerodactyl is slightly more rare than getting Ammonite or Amastar, so that is something to take into consideration. Now, to make the special one, you're actually kind of 
in a really awkward spot because, well, now this is where the recipe works against us. It gave us a lot of diversity on the good and very good recipes, but if we read this again, whole lot of hard things and a few minerals. Well, the problem is there's not really much else hard that we have soft, we have soft, and then we have soft. So that means we can't just do all five icy rocks. That what we need is we need five ingredients to turn it into something special, and then we also need something else to kind of help balance it out. So a whole lot of hard things and a few minerals, that means we can go with something like this. Uh, three on the icy rocks, one fossil to give us the requirement, and then we need, you need to use a rainbow matter if you're going for a special rock type Pokemon, which does kind of like contribute to it, you know, it feels a lot more special. We're using a rainbow matter, we're guaranteeing our odds at a fossil Pokemon, so it seems like we're getting really rare Pokemon with this, which is pretty cool. Now, in the beginning of the video, I did mention that Rock-type Pokemon are going to be some of the best Pokemon to have in the early mid-game, as well as the transitioning late game, and here's why. World 7. Miasma Moor. Bonus typing, Rock. So you're going to get an advantage when you use Rock-type Pokemon. Then right up the hill, we have the Hushed Highlands. Bonus typing, Ground. That's actually pretty insane. Because, as we just saw, we can get exclusively rock ground type Pokemon through using the normal recipe on the rock soup. That means there's nothing crazy behind it. You don't have to do anything like precious ingredients, you don't have to waste a ton of resources. You make the most basic thing using only fossils and apricorns, and you're going to have two consecutive world advantages while making those Pokemon stronger. The better part about that is that Pincushion Plane is going to give you a silver cooking pot. So even if you're not using rock type Pokemon around this area well then you just silver cooking pot you save up just save up your apricorns save up your fossils and then that is going to coast you into the late game and then I even use my ride on to finish the chamber of legends so there's actually a lot of different utility and a lot of crazy stuff you can get right there but even for beating these worlds right here I was stumped worlds five or four five and six couldn't beat them so what I ended up doing was getting a Rhyhorn again a fairly easy recipe for some pretty strong Pokemon Rhyhorn can get the move crunch and crunch is insane amounts of damage so these Pokemon they either get really tanky and really tough to kill which means if you do have something like a Graveler like a Golem and it's holding down your team well that means as long as it can stay alive you're retreating properly it's just using Harden that means other Pokemon have a chance to revive recover and then go in and start doing some extra damage, or you just have Pokemon like this. The Rhyhorn into Rhydon was able to get me through a lot of that mid game without too much problem, and then even when it becomes Rhydon, then it gets Megahorn. Megahorn is silly, silly amounts of damage, and you know what? I'm okay with that. So that's why the Rhydon was also able to just kind of transition into that later game, because it was one-shotting everything for a while that I got so much experience, I got so many stones, I got so much ability to farm just off these rock ground type Pokemon in my Asthma Moor, in the Hushed Highlands, that I was able to get a lot of stones, I was able to power up. So really what these Pokemon do is they help you skip that mid-game cliff. Because this is a freemium game, you are going to encounter a lot of roadblocks that pretty much just halt you in your tracks, but at least these Pokemon, easy to get, easy to farm for, and they make things even better. Also, another thing is, they're pretty easy to target. You go to the store, you go to the decorations, and if this is kind of the route that you want to take, go for the Dodrio tent as well as the Cushion, and you're good to go. So you can actually kind of enhance the Pokemon that you're getting through this if you want to do it that way. Now, unfortunately, I don't feel like Amistar, Kabutops, and Aerodactyl are the strongest Pokemon that you can have on your team. It's more about the cool factor, like I keep saying. You know, you get that fossil Pokemon, it's a rare Pokemon, it's a special recipe, kind of farm up for them if you want them, use them to complete the Pokedex. That's kind of going to be it. Uh, you might notice that when it comes to Kabutops and Amistar, that they can be the uh, strong Pokemon inside of certain dungeons. So they use Withdrawal, that's a little bit of extra tankiness. So if you really want to use them, you can still find utility uses for them. You can still do reasonable amounts of damage, but some people have picked up the Aerodactyl, does a lot of damage with Crunch, does pretty well with that Fly, it's just that other people are prioritizing other Pokemon, they can still be fairly useful for the special Pokemon that they are. And I think that's pretty much it. I think one thing I didn't mention uh, to this point is also the repeatability. That if you can just farm so easily for a specific Pokemon when it comes to this, especially if we're looking at, you know, Geodude, Graveler, Golem, Rhyhorn, Rhydon, if you can actually just repeatedly get so many of them, well, that's going to be making training really easy. So if you want to get the right move on these Pokemon, not going to be that difficult. If you want to get extra levels, also going to be fairly easy as well, because if you're just cooking the basic apricorn fossil recipe while you're out on adventures gaining experience you come in you do some training you get more experience also since you are getting 
advantages in Miasma Moor, in Hush Thailand, you are kind of snowballing with this, and then you're just getting extra snowballing with how easy the Pokemon are to obtain, especially getting the same species and stuff like that. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope this guide helped out for all of your rock type needs in Pokemon Quest. If you did like the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below your thoughts, and share with all your friends. Anyone that's interested in Pokemon Quest, I have a lot of guides about the game, and you can find that in the description down below. All kinds of fun stuff. I plan on doing a guide for every uh, typing of Pokemon, how to obtain them, any specific weirdness about it. I feel that rock types, since I pretty much primarily use them to get through the storyline of the game, I have more to say about them than other typings, but it does kind of pad things out, because like I said, it's like, oh, there's only a few rock types, how special can they be? Actually has a bit of depth to it, which is pretty cool in Pokemon Quest. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.